So you've heard about this online business model, this opportunity called Amazon FBA or private labeling, and you're wondering, what is it? How does it work? And most importantly, how can I use it to get started selling on Amazon as a complete beginner? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain this using four simple steps in a way that will make sense to you if you're a complete beginner, if you're new to uh, selling online, starting an online business, and achieving financial freedom. What's up guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Miles and I'm a seven figure a year Amazon FBA private label seller. So I'm making this video today because just under two years ago, I was in your shoes. I was a complete beginner, having never sold anything on Amazon, you know, not even knowing really what it was, and then fast forward to today and I've sold just under $2 million. I have two brands, around 30 products, and I've used it, I've used Amazon FBA to create a life of abundance and financial freedom. Having done that for myself, I'm here now to help you accelerate your own Amazon FBA journey. So if you're interested in learning about Amazon FBA and how to do it the right way, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Do click the like button if you find these videos valuable. And I love interacting with you guys. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns, just leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And if you are enjoying all of this content that I'm putting out for free, but you want more guidance and comprehensive access to everything that I've learned over the last couple of years, then click that first link down below in the video description and secure your spot for access to my accelerator program. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how to get started selling on Amazon as a beginner using a four step process. Make sure you watch right until the end. You have to understand all of these four points to be able to get started the right way. So without further ado, let's start with number one, which is how does Amazon FBA work? So at its most basic, FBA just means fulfillment by Amazon. So that is taking advantage of Amazon's world-class warehousing and fulfillment services. And fulfillment just means shipping products to customers. So if you're wondering whether this is a scam or some sort of get rich quick scheme, it's not. The FBA platform is one of the largest pillars of Amazon's annual revenues. I believe it's around $40 billion per year um, that FBA generates. And of that 40 billion, the majority is actually generated by third party sellers. So that just means not Amazon. So I'm a third party seller. And if you get started selling on Amazon, you will be as well. Now the percentage of those sellers, those third party sellers who are generating more than a million dollars per year, that's around 20% of all sellers. Uh, and the number of sellers selling more than $10 million is around 3%. So you can see that there's a lot of money in the idea and the concept of FBA itself. And at its most simplistic form, all we're doing is finding products that we know will sell well on Amazon and then using Amazon's FBA service to ship those products out to customers. And if you're wondering, well, you know, why use Amazon to do that? Why use this FBA service? Think about this for a second. If you're selling on another platform, let's say eBay, and this is what I used to do when I used to sell on eBay. If you sell a product to a customer, you're gonna be storing all of your products that you have available for sale in your house or in your garage somewhere sitting in a big pile. And then when somebody buys that product, it could be through eBay or through your website, then you're gonna go rummage through that pile, find the product that they just bought, and then you're gonna go into your car, take it to the post office and ship it to the customer yourself. Now that's okay if it's one item per day, but think about if you wanna use this to really generate financial freedom, you need to sell more than one item per day. You're gonna be selling 10 and you know, you're gonna be trying to grow to 100 units per day, 1,000, there's really no limit. The more money you make, the more units you're gonna sell. But now let's just consider doing that for 50 units a day or for 100 units a day. And I can tell you going from starting my Amazon business selling five units a day to now selling around about 100 to 200 units per day, there is no way that I could have scaled to this point if I was doing that fulfillment myself. It simply wouldn't be possible. Because again, the goal here is to be able to build something that's scalable, that we can use to really change our lives, not just make some money, but really make a significant amount of money. So you can see that using FBA is the key part of this whole thing that makes it infinitely scalable, that allows us to free up our time, either to enjoy life or to go back and start launching more products and making more money. So the next thing is, how do we actually sign up and how do we start using FBA? Well, I'm gonna show you that right now. So first of all, just signing up is a really simple process. You can do this from anywhere in the world. Um, there is a list of countries available, but most countries honestly fit into this list. So generally wherever you are in the world, you can sign up. So go to services.amazon.com and then just click start selling. This will take you through to the next page and we are new to Amazon. So go create your Amazon account. And from here on, just enter your details and pass on through. You can sign up as an individual, uh, you, so you don't need a company yet. Although I do recommend that you start with a company for liability purposes and for accounting later on. 
But honestly, if you just wanna get into this today and have a play around, then you can sign up as an individual and you can easily change these details later on. You can also change your bank details later on and everything else essentially without too much hassle. So we can go in and do this immediately. And just know we have two options to choose from, the individual seller plan and the professional seller plan. So the individual plan is completely free. You can sign up immediately and not have to pay anything. But just note, when you get started selling, you'll be charged a dollar for every item that you sell. So if you're selling more than 40, the professional sell plan, which has a fee of $39 a month, will actually become more economical. The professional sell plan also gives you access to Amazon marketing services and other things that realistically, if you're trying to scale this business and really use it to achieve financial freedom, you will need anyway. But what we can do, a quick hack, is you can sign up for the professional sell plan if you want access to those features immediately. And every month when you get charged that $39, just send a message to Amazon seller support and ask them to refund the money because you haven't used the account. I go through all of this in detail in my Amazon Seller Central tutorial. I'm gonna leave a link to it up here if you're interested in that. Uh, it really is a great breakdown of all of the features that you could possibly wanna know about in Amazon Seller Central. So number two, find a product. We're looking for sufficient demand, low competition, and a product that we can differentiate or improve on in some way. So you're probably asking, well, how do we know? How do we know what's in demand and what's selling? How do we know what the competition is? And how do we know how we can improve or change a product? Well, luckily for us, Amazon gives us all of that information. All we need are a few simple tools. Now this second part, finding a product, this is probably the most critical part of starting an Amazon business. There are a thousand ways in which you can approach this and a thousand different things that you can look for. And most of them work, it's really just a matter of preference. But for the purpose of explaining this to just get started, I'm gonna talk about this in simple terms. So let me show you. So as I mentioned before, basically all of the data that we need to evaluate roughly whether a product is good or bad in terms of the demand, in terms of the competition, and in terms of the differentiation, we can really get straight from Amazon. So let's just start here with an example. And one thing that I think is a really cool like mindset hack is always when you're browsing Amazon, don't be browsing it just as a customer. We need to start thinking in terms of a seller and in terms of um, an entrepreneur and using Amazon as this platform to sell products. So using this yoga mat as an example, let's just take a very quick look, even without looking at all into this data on any like deep level, what can we see from this page? The main thing that really jumps out to me as a seller is the review count. So the review count is gonna tell us competition, how much competition there is for this particular item. And seeing that the top item has, you know, 1100 reviews, and the next one below that has 7,686, here nearly a thousand and so on and so forth, we can immediately see that all of these sellers, they've been selling these products for years and lots of people have been buying them. So without looking at anything else, I can already see from this very first page that the term yoga mat and the product yoga mat is going to be really competitive because there are just so many reviews that have been left that I know that lots of people are buying these and lots of people are selling them. So reviews is a key metric for competition, but how about demand? How much demand is there for these products, for yoga mats? Uh, without, again, without using any further tools, Amazon gives us this information in terms of the best seller rank. So what we have to do is scroll all the way down, down to here, and you'll see this Amazon best sellers rank in the product details. So best sellers rank, or BSR for short, is as the name implies, it's a ranking. So the number one BSR in every category will be the best selling item. And then we simply keep moving down in the rankings. And this one again is number 32 in sports and outdoors. Uh, and we can go all the way down to probably hundreds of thousands. And obviously the one that's at rank 100,000 is going to be selling much, much less than the one that's at rank 32, or of course the one that's at number one ranking. So that's just a rank that doesn't tell us how much in dollar terms um, these ones are actually being sold, how many units are being sold per day. But we know that in most of these categories, if you look at the top level category and it's in the top 100, uh, that is going to be hugely competitive. And we can go through here and we can you know, have a browse through all of these lists for all of these categories or we can look at the Amazon best sellers uh, overall. So actually, let's Google that and we can just Google Amazon best seller to take you to the high level most popular selling items on Amazon. Now again, we don't know how many of these are selling per day yet because we haven't used any tools or anything to tell us that, but we do know that you know these are incredibly popular items. And this is a good starting point to just be browsing Amazon and viewing it not just as a customer again, but as a seller. And in my experience, there are a whole bunch of categories that you should be focusing your efforts on looking at. 
So I would say that arts, crafts, and sewing has good potential, baby also. We can also look at beauty and personal care, uh, health and household, home and kitchen, industrial and scientific, kitchen and dining, definitely, office products, patio, lawn, and garden, pet supplies as well, uh, sports and outdoors is another popular one, and tools and home improvement, yes, and also toys and games. So we can use these sorts of lists just as a starting point or a jumping off point to deep dive down into each of these categories, which I recommended. And you can look through others as well, but that, those ones that I mentioned are the ones where you'll probably find the most opportunities. And once we start diving down into them, then we're gonna take a deeper look at the whole demand versus competition playing field. So we know that BSR approximately represents the demand of an item and reviews approximately represent the competition of an item. But how do we sort of take a deeper look uh, into certain products and what that actually means in terms of the dollars that we can make versus how much we're gonna have to compete with other sellers for those dollars. So this is where we start getting into the use of third-party tools to help us translate this data into something more meaningful and also something that's much more detailed and can allow us to really uh, put hard numbers to these things for each product. So the one that I'm gonna recommend that you use as a Chrome extension is Viralaunch. There's also Jungle Scout uh, and Jungle Scout has a good web app. But for Chrome extensions, I recommend Viralaunch because it's just the most comprehensive one. It gives you all of this data and it's also more accurate than Jungle Scout and the other ones, in my experience anyway. So we can see now that we can still see this BSR, which I just talked about, um, but it also puts in this monthly revenue. And essentially what Viralaunch or, or another similar product is doing is they're taking these BSR rankings, which again, we said was simply ranks going from number one down to you know 100,000, but they have enough data points of BSRs at different points in time that they know how much roughly each BSR equates to in monthly revenue. So instead of just looking at this in terms of a rank, we now have the key metric, which is how much money is each product making. Um, and Viral Launch also gives us all of this other data just summarized in a neat table, which we can export here to CSV, but it's gonna tell us, you know, what's the price, what's the margin, um, how many unit sales, and again, then going back to that other key metric in terms of competition, how many reviews are there? How fast are those review, reviews accumulating? And what's the, what's the quality of those reviews for that product? Now, suddenly this information that was really spread out before where we were kind of just looking one item at a time and just having this rank and you know nothing really easy to compare against, we can now see what each product looks like. And this is just for the first page, but I can also repeat this search for the second and third search pages and so on and so forth. And I can do this with any product and then compare different products with each other as well. So I mentioned the key metrics that we wanna look at are adequate demand. Is there enough demand? Is there enough monthly revenue in these products that it's worthwhile pursuing them? And then on the flip side, what are the reviews like? What's the competition like? How much do we have to do to get into this market? So if we sort this by monthly revenue, this first page of yoga mats, we might be tempted at first to think this is a great opportunity because they're making so much money. You know, these sellers are making upwards of $50,000 a month in revenue. But we, what we have to consider is the competition aspect. And here we're looking at, while it's $50,000 a month in revenue, the review quantity is thousands. And if we go to detailed statistics here in Viral Launch, we can actually see uh, the actual statistics. And here for those first five listings, it's 3,000 reviews. And if you're looking at the bottom of the first page, it's still 1,500 reviews. Now getting reviews in 2018 and in 2019 on Amazon, getting reviews is not easy. And so honestly, if you see a review count that's that high, just discount that entire product. You need to start looking and digging down further into these deeper products. And generally what you'll find is that actually as you add more words onto a product name, but it becomes more specific. And as you get more specific, you'll find that the revenue may go down but so too also will the reviews. And so for me, it's about finding a sweet spot. Normally my sweet spot is around $5,000 to $15,000 a month. If I can get a product that is selling around about that much, I like that because what it means is that there aren't so many people looking at it and there's also not so much money that there's lots of competition generally. Now I also have to look at the reviews and while I'm looking at this range that's five to $15,000, I would ideally like something that I can get into that has an average of less than 100 reviews. And again, using that viral launch tool, you can see what the average reviews are on page one. So there are a million ways of finding these longer tail, more specific products. But one way, very simple way, is to just use Amazon's own data. So we're looking here and we go yoga mat would be okay. 
But you can see as you start typing, you actually get a whole bunch of suggestions that Amazon is popping up. And what these are, are the most relevant related products to what we've already typed in. So here we could start looking and honestly, just go down this list at random and just keep clicking through and then start experimenting and exploring this whole Amazon ecosystem of all of these millions of different products. And maybe I wanna look at yoga pants for women. And in fact, here we could even straight away go even longer tail and go yoga pants for women with pockets. And having gone down into this longer tail, this much more specific product, much more specific keyword, if we just take a quick scroll through here and look at the review count, and we can see already how much lower these review counts are. So here we are, 63 reviews, you know, still a few hundred there, still a few hundred there. There's another one with 100 reviews, 65 reviews. And so we can see that if we're a new seller, getting into a niche like this is going to be much easier because those reviews, there's much less of them that we need to compete against. And again, we'll check viral launch and just see. And of course, it makes sense that the monthly revenue has gone down and viral launch has a lot of really cool nifty features like it actually will tag outliers. So in this case, we're seeing 100,000 in monthly revenue. Um, it's indicated that this is not, you know, this doesn't represent that niche. So it's actually excluded it from the data set. We can go and look into the detailed statistics again. And we can see that the revenue here is much, much lower, but so is the review count. Now, I don't like this ratio. I think 400 reviews on average for only $5,000 in revenue. Um, that's not a great opportunity in my eyes. But again, we go through this process and we keep looking and we keep seeing these products and doing this process, checking the data for each one. And eventually you will find a product that meets these criteria. So we've looked at where we wanna fit into this balance between the demand or the revenue and the competition or the reviews. But how about differentiation? Now, I can't stress how important differentiation is if you're looking at getting started and selling on Amazon now in 2018. Now, the way that we're gonna use Amazon's own data to prove and to, to show us how we can differentiate, how we can improve these products is simply by going and looking at the reviews of competitors' listings. Customer reviews are an absolute goldmine of what we should and shouldn't be targeting our efforts towards. If you can create a five-star customer experience and you can create a product that actually very specifically meets the needs of your customers, the competition and the, the reviews that you're competing against, they don't end up meaning very much. When your product is simply better, you will not have a problem selling your product on Amazon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and look at some of these competitors. So if we were interested in selling yoga pants for women with pockets, what I would do is I would look through all of these listings, go into the specific listing, look at the reviews, and I'm gonna show you now what I mean. So guys, if I was looking to sell this product, I would go through these customer reviews and spend hours pouring through them, particularly the three, the two, and the one star reviews. I would do this for every main competitor because what I want to be doing is identifying what are all the core problems, the deficiencies, what are the issues that that customer has with this product? Because I know that if I can release a product that fixes all of these issues, all of these one-star reviews, then not only are customers going to be happy and, and choosing to buy my product, I'm going to accumulate reviews faster, I'm going to accumulate repeat customers faster, and my product is just going to take off on Amazon. And so looking down here, we can see, you know, sizing is an issue. So maybe that's simply a matter of marketing these products correctly, having the correct sizing charts. Um, you're also going to have issues around the quality of the fabric, quality of the fabric, again, too thin. And so we, what we do is we keep looking through these and we keep working out what the problems are. And once we've built up enough information, then we know what we take to the supplier. And I just wanted to add on one extra example as well. Another way that you can differentiate and create a unique product that doesn't yet exist on Amazon and therefore guarantee that you stand out from all of the competition. And that is the concept of bundling. And bundling at its most simplistic is simply taking one product that exists and maybe another product and then combining those two together. So here I'm looking at workout bands. And the way that I generally look at bundling opportunities is simply by scrolling down to the frequently bought together box. And this is showing you, Amazon is telling you when somebody buys this product that we're looking at now, what are they most likely to already want to buy as well? And the answer here is, so they're buying these workout bands. Then they're also buying these core sliders. So these are like, sliders that you you know you slide along the floor when you're working out um, and they're also buying they're buying more resistance band sets here but this one also has door anchors handles and, and ankle straps and so just purely looking at this we can see that we could potentially create this product that's going to be our exercise bands these rubber exercise bands and we could probably add in core sliders as well 
And maybe if we wanted to go really extreme and just make the complete package that doesn't exist yet on Amazon for you know the fitness enthusiast, then we could also add in these other workout bands. We could also add in these door handles so that basically with this entire kit, they can go and they can work out anywhere and in any way that they want to. So Amazon is literally showing us what is the best product to bundle in with this first one. It's right here. You can also look down here and see what other people are looking at together and really just pick a natural combination that really makes sense. So differentiating your product, improving it, and making it unique and standing out from the competition is only getting more important. So think about, can you use a different color? Can you use a different design? Can you improve the materials? Can you combine your product or change the function? Can you bundle your product with another one to make it unique? Think about those things, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is number three, finding a supplier. So to do this third part of the process, we're gonna use Alibaba.com. Now, if you're not familiar with Alibaba, let's just talk about what it is versus what it isn't. So Alibaba is a platform that links Chinese factories located within China with essentially the rest of the world. And this is a fantastic opportunity, just like Amazon is for in terms of the products, Alibaba is fantastic in terms of finding a supplier for those products. So when I first started using Alibaba, I was shocked by how simple and easy it was to actually get you know, almost any product imaginable made halfway around the world and then have it shipped to the other side of the world um, in a very quick period of time. So there are a few simple steps that we need to take, a few precautions that we need to have in place to make sure that when we're doing this, we don't get ripped off. Uh, we get the product that we ordered and of the right quality. So let me explain that to you now. So we're here on alibaba.com and it really is as simple as simply typing in the product that you're looking for. In this case, I'm using the yoga mat example again. And then just looking down here and what we wanna do is make sure that we select trade assurance. Just click this and we can also select gold plus as well. And all this really means is that they've just gone through more checks and more verification from Alibaba to check that they are really selling the stuff that they claim to be selling. And that's about it really. The main control that I really rely on is using Trade Assurance, at least for new suppliers. Um, trade Assurance or PayPal plus a credit card. And you can, we can look at additional features down here if we want to use any additional filters. Uh, On-site checked, I don't think is really necessary, but if you want more security, then you can tick that one as well. And you can also check if it's a company that has done you know, a minimum uh, threshold of revenue. Again, these are just really if you want that additional layer of security. It also depends as well how many products you can actually find using these criteria. So obviously yoga mat is incredibly popular. So I can find 15,000 products even with these checked. And then you simply go down and if you wanna add extra filters, you can. But I would simply go down and contact almost all of the suppliers that have the product that I want and you can go through and you can click into these to see more detail from the supplier. Uh, the exact product offering that they're doing. You can see the, the reference prices that they have. Now, obviously this is open to negotiation. It also depends, uh, it really depends on the quantity that you're going to order, but you can see more details, how they accept payment and definitely look through here as well to see based on the customizations, the differentiation that you decided on in the previous step, whether they'll be able to provide that. But realistically, you're only going to know when you click contact supplier and you send them an email and request further details. So I would normally contact lots of suppliers. So you found a list of suppliers that have the product that you want, you start talking to them, you know that they already are gold suppliers and they have trade assurance, so you're already pretty safe. Make sure then that when you negotiate, you're putting a few other things in place to protect yourself even more. Firstly, always get samples. You need to see the product and feel it for yourself. If not, then you need to have somebody in China who can do that for you. But again, we're just starting, so make sure that you get those samples sent to yourself and have a good look at them and make sure that if there's anything wrong with them, you identify those issues and fix them. Be very clear with your suppliers and the product specifications because anytime there's room for ambiguity or uncertainty, chances are that's where something will go wrong. So make sure you have a clear purchase agreement with that supplier, basically detailing exactly how everything should be. In terms of negotiating a better price, it's always nice to have multiple suppliers who can offer the same product because then you can have them actually fighting against each other to get your business. So once you have your supplier worked out, you're happy with the price, you've seen the samples, and you've made that agreement, just make sure you're paying using trade assurance or PayPal, and ideally using a credit card as well. You're then protected using two layers of protection. The only other thing you should watch out for is to get a pre-shipment inspection. If you get these goods inspected and you've paid using those methods, you've just sourced your first product almost risk-free. So we've got our first product. We send it into Amazon, and then there's only one step left, and that is step four, 
launch the product. So we're really close to success, but now we need to get that product selling on Amazon, selling profitably and start making money. So we have to launch the product and I'm gonna explain why we need to do this and how to do it. So let me show you. So we're back here looking at our yoga mat example on Amazon. And the key thing that we need to understand now in terms of launching our product is how do we get it seen up here? So this is what a customer sees when, they're, when they've searched in yoga mat. And at first they're seeing these two and then they're seeing a bunch of these and then they're scrolling down from the top and looking at all of these listings. So the key thing is, how do we get to the top basically? Now there are a number of ways that we can do this, but what you need to realize is that when you launch your new product, this is page one and then there's page two and then there's page three and it goes all the way to page 20. So if you have a brand new yoga mat, you are going to end up down here somewhere. So we could keep going back, page three, page four, all the way to page 20, and you'd be down there somewhere. So going back to the first page, the way that Amazon is ordering all of these listings is basically based on sales velocity. So that means the number of sales that this product is generating for the keyword yoga mats. So everything is based on keywords with Amazon. And this is a key point that we need to realize. So to get up to here, we need to make lots of sales. And actually we need to match the number of sales that this listing is getting. Now we can see that again using our viral launch tool. So if we go to the detailed statistics page and then scroll down, we can see that viral launch is telling us how many do we actually need to give away each day to get that sales velocity to match those top listings. And in this case, we're looking at the top five listings on the first page. And the answer is we need to give away between 40 and 100 units every day. And that means that that's the sales velocity of those products already up there. And if we can do that for seven to 10 days, then our product will end up at the top as well. Now that's one way of doing it is essentially giving away all of those products over that period of time to get up here. The second way is using Amazon's PPC, that's pay-per-click advertising. And that's what these ones are. See this little sponsored here with the little eye? What that means is somebody is actually paying to have their listing put right up here, right at the very top. And every time you click on that or a customer clicks on that, uh, that company, whoever's selling this yoga mat, will actually pay money to Amazon for that privilege. So we have these two options of doing it. We can either give away those units, those 40 to 100 units a day to get ranked here alongside this one, or we can pay Amazon money directly to have these products seen here. And remember that if we don't do that, our product ends up all the way back down on like page 20. And that's how to get started selling on Amazon FBA as a beginner in four simple steps. Now, I don't want you to walk away from this thinking that that's all there is to this because there's so much more, you know, I'm still learning new stuff about this every day, two years later. Um, but in terms of the simplicity of this business model, I just I don't know what other opportunity there is where you can start with a few thousand dollars and then literally in less than two years be earning millions of dollars every year. Um, I hope that you found this video valuable, guys. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'm putting out lots of content like this specifically to help you getting in your journey from being a beginner to six or seven figures on Amazon like I've done. Um, and if you're looking for further guidance, and again, that's exclusive access to everything that I've learned so far, um, then do click that first link down below to get exclusive access to the Nomad Accelerator program. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much. The next video is coming right up, so don't go anywhere. I'll see you there.